This is a $600 camera lens, but is it good enough for a full day worth of photos? I'm gonna answer that question, plus what I think makes this lens so special, with some examples and some things that you might wanna look out for. This lens has the potential to be your one and only lens because it's extremely versatile, it's relatively inexpensive, and it has one big trick hidden up its sleeve. The lens I'm using is actually only $399 because it's the Canon RF lens that's designed for cameras like the R6 Mark II that I'm shooting on in this video. But if you're not a Canon shooter, let me know down below what cameras and lenses do you shoot on, and I'll go ahead and leave some examples of similar lenses down in the description that are all under $600. So this is a 35 millimeter lens, and there's a reason I've chosen 35 over the typical lens that a lot of people recommend, which is the 50 millimeter or the nifty 50. Now, the 50 millimeter is great because it's inexpensive but the 50 millimeter doesn't have image stabilization. And the logic behind buying the 50 as like your first and only lens kind of falls apart if you're shooting on a crop sensor camera. Let me explain that a little bit more. There are two main types of photo cameras, full frame cameras and crop sensor cameras. Now this is a full frame camera. And you can probably tell by looking in that the sensor is a little bit larger. If you open it up and you look at your camera and it looks a little bit smaller, that's probably because it's an APS-C or a crop sensor camera. Crop sensor cameras are a little bit more affordable than full frame cameras, and they're a little bit more accessible to beginners. And if you're in that category, there's a good chance that you probably don't wanna spend thousands of dollars on expensive L-series or G-Master lenses. Which is why this 50 millimeter or this nifty 50 f1.8 lens gets recommended all the time. It's only about 200 or $250 but here's the catch. Crop sensor cameras have a crop factor of 1.5, which means any lens you attach gets multiplied by 1.5 and ends up looking more zoomed in. So if you put a 50 millimeter on a crop sensor camera, it kind of becomes 75 millimeters. So if you take a 35 millimeter and put that on a crop sensor camera, then it becomes, oh my gosh, math. 50 millimeters. What's happening? 1.5. If you put 35 millimeters on a crop sensor camera, that becomes about 52 and a half millimeters or 50 millimeters. All of that to say, I believe the 35 millimeter is a more versatile only lens to have versus a 50 millimeter. And if you so happen to be shooting on a full frame camera, 35 is one of my favorite focal lengths. It's wide enough to shoot architecture and buildings and portraits and just kind of good all around as a nice looking focal length. So what's so special about these 1.8 prime lenses? Well, they all hit that sweet spot of price to performance. They're all well under $1,000, but they all have that wide open aperture, that maximum aperture of f1.8. And that's their special trick. It means you can let even more light in and you can get that really shallow depth of field to get that blurry bokeh background and really isolate the subjects that you're trying to shoot. They're also great in low light scenarios where you know maybe an f4 lens or an f2.8 lens wouldn't get you the amount of light you need. In this case, you get almost an entire stop of light more than an f2.8 lens. It's not quite a full stop, but almost a full stop. So something really important to consider with these less expensive STM lenses is that they're STM because of the slower autofocus. Now, if you buy a less expensive prime lens, like a 1.8 lens, typically the autofocus system that they put inside of these lenses is a little bit noisier than like an L series or a G master lens. And it's not quite as stable as a really expensive, like $2,000, $3,000 prime lens. But again, that comes with the compromises of buying a 300 or a 400 or a $600 prime lens. It's smaller, which is great because you can carry more of them with you. They're less expensive, but they're not quite as fast or as durable.
And honestly, that might be okay for you. If you're not shooting super fast moving subjects or you're shooting inside of a studio where all of your settings are done manually, then these lenses are honestly a great option and might be the perfect solution for you. So you probably saw I have this really large ring on the end of the camera. And if you're wondering what that is, that's a thread adapter. And that's because these smaller prime lenses don't have an 82 millimeter filter size, which is what I'm using right now. One thing to notice is because these are cheaper lenses, the front element kind of moves in and out as it focuses, which can make it a little bit tricky to get the filters on and off. But once you've got it, you got it. You just have to be a little bit careful with it. Now you can see that's a 52 millimeter to what, 82 millimeter thread adapter. So that's not part of the lens, which maybe, whoop, <laughs> maybe when you saw it, it looked a little bit funny, but it's a much smaller lens than the actual thread adapter. And like all of these 1.8 prime lenses, you can see just how small they are, which makes them perfect to mount to a small camera or a small gimbal or pack inside of your suitcase if you're trying to keep your camera set up ultralight while you're traveling. You're a Canon shooter. Yeah. 35, 1.8, here, take it. Maybe with a little bit of a firmer grasp. I think the 35 f1.8 is a really good starter lens. You definitely are trading off some pro features when you get it. I think it is a really solid lens, especially if you're starting out and you're pairing it with something like an R10 or an R7. It's honestly not too bad. It is missing a few things. It doesn't have weather sealing. So the lens we're shooting on now, which is the 15 to 35, it's an L series lens. So it has a gasket. That one, if you take it off. Nothing. So the gasket is normally around the outer edges, but it's just bare metal. It's not a huge deal, but it is something like, you know, with this 70 to 200, with the 24 to 70, with all the L series lenses, it's just nice knowing that nothing is gonna get in between your lens and the sensor. You can take your lens back now. There you go. <laughs> Thank take you. Take the good one. <laughs> take the, Will's taking his 70 to 200 back. It's okay, I got, I got my own, I got my own. There we go. 35 millimeter street photography. <laughs> Sigma lenses. Sigma. Sony body. Oh Only man. Sigma. I really want a Sigma prime lens. Unfortunately, <laughs> you can't get Sigma prime lenses. There are no, there's no RF 1.4. There's no 24 millimeter. There's no 24 millimeter prime. There's no 35 millimeter L prime. Sigma, Canon, just come together. Just, just come together. I think this spot, even though you know, you can see. I think it's more of like a 70 to 200 spot. Like it's it's not quite a 30, like this is what's, this is 15. If I go to 35, you know, that's that's 35. Will was shooting on the 70 to 200. Maybe I'll have to pull up the 70 to 200 and try that instead. Or a 50. Maybe we try the 50, which I said wasn't a good option. If we had a crop sensor camera, that would be like a 75. So I can, I can try that. I've got my own 70 to 200. Never, never leave home without the 70 to 200. That's 75. <laughs> so if you were shooting a crop sensor, mm -hmm. oh, is it? Yeah. Can you crank the, the aperture? Let's try, try that one more time. But, you know, with telephoto, obviously telephoto, it's like, there's the CN Tower, guys. 35, still a good option, but if you need a little bit of zoom, 70 to 200. This is how the street photographers do it, 35 millimeter, and then when you see something, <laughs> seriously though. Like with the guys with the Fuji cameras and the 35 millimeters and 24 millimeters, you just gotta be ready for anything. Because street photographer. It's not the CN Tower, but like shoot that with 50 millimeters. 35 millimeters looks great. It's perfect. With 35, such a good compass. Oh, now we have two towers. Hold on. It looks good. <laughs> now we have now we have two towers. Oh, I moved over a little bit. I can get that shot with a 35 millimeter. It's super wide, but you can try it. Okay. Look, everyone's turning left. I'll tell you if someone comes. Oh, 35 looks great. Car's coming. Car's coming. My battery's dead. Quick battery change. It actually looked really good at 35. Always bring spare battery. We should just do a what's in my camera bag. Right here? Right, right here, right now. Sensor, sensor this. It's top, top secret info. Okay, here we go. <laughs> These guys over here trying to get their photo. Okay. 
Do you think, do you think, do you think, do you think they're content creators? Okay, I'm gonna get my settings. What are we shooting at? 35, one over 500, 100 ISO. The sky will be blown out. We've got the, we got the mist filter, so maybe I'll try it twice. I'll do it once with the mist filter and once without the mist filter. Vertical. Oh, it looks great. Okay, not bad. 35 millimeter looks pretty good. Sky might be a bit blown out, but we might be able to do a recovery with some highlights adjustments in Lightroom. Click here for that video. You, Will, you know it's a good photo spot when there are other people. We might no, have to sue. Did they cameras, just... phone cameras are about 35 millimeters. They're about a 35 millimeter equivalent. So if you like the look of your cell phone camera, like the one times camera, probably a 35 or maybe a 24. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. It's the photographer. It's the photographer effect. Like that one time it's in Las big, Vegas. Look, it's a big lens. Look how long my lens is. <laughs> Covers my entire hand. When you pull out a lens like that and you start shooting photos, everyone instantly is going to want to take the same photo that you took. Understandable. So the final question you may have is, should you get a 35 1.8? Like, is it a lens that you need? I got it for one specific reason. Now, why did I get it? If I've already got all these zoom lenses that shoot at really nice quality and our f 2.8. Well, the biggest reason is that f 2.8. f 2.8 is great, but if you need another stop of light, you need a lens that's about 1.4. That will get you one more stop as, uh, of light or your photos will be twice as bright. Right now, Canon doesn't make a 1.4 35 for the RF system, so we got this one and it's gonna work for the time being. There are legends of wedding photographers who have shot entire weddings on a single 35 millimeter prime lens. And I completely believe them. It's the one focal length that you can pretty much throw on your camera and take a photo of anything. But if you're not thinking about the Canon RF 35 1.8 prime or the, the 1.4 prime, I'm curious to hear what camera lens you are thinking about because there are a few that I still haven't reviewed. So let me know down below if there's something specific that you'd like to see me review. And if you wanna see that video, make sure you're subscribed. And until the next one, Go shoot photos. What would you rate this photo spot on a scale of uh, one to five blog TO stars? Give it like a three. This it's, is a it's, three. A, it's a great spot, but it's like a, you come here one time, get a photo and it's done.